In 1831, Faraday discovered electromagnetic induction and designed the homopolar generator, which consisted of a copper disc that spun in a magnetic field. Now, the same principle of induction can be seen in modern day dynamos and generators. And I'm going to show you how to build a simple hand cranked generator that uses everyday components, including magnets, two of them, a nail, some copper insulated wire, some electrical connectors, two pennies, some black insulation tape, and some cardboard. Once the fuel's been processed, it's got to be delivered out to customers. Now the finished fuels, the petrol, the diesel, the kerosene, get delivered through an underground network of pipes which run right across the country. Some of the fuel gets loaded onto these lorries here at the distribution terminal and it's delivered by road. So Mick, how many lorries leave here per day? Uh, around 600 vehicles per day in a 24 hour period and that's seven days a week. And how much fuel can go on one of these lorries? They can carry up to 40,000 litres per truck. Now that's a lot of fuel. It is a lot of fuel, yes. Corriton produces a lot of fuel, all of which gets consumed. Daily output of gas is equal to 22,000 barbecues. Enough jet fuel is produced each day to go to New York and back 80 times and enough petrol to go to the moon and back 180 times. Stars are basically nuclear fusion reactors up in space. They convert hydrogen into helium, and the process of converting hydrogen into helium releases energy in the form of heat and light. If we think of our star, the Sun, it's currently 75% hydrogen, 24% helium, and 1% other stuff. And for the last five billion years, it's been converting hydrogen into helium. But eventually, in about another five billion years, it will run out of hydrogen. Photovoltaic cells are less useful here in the UK for a number of reasons. Firstly, our climate. These things work best when there's direct sunlight. And today, it's cloudy. And the second reason is winter. In the winter months, the daylight hours are short and the nighttime hours are long. And these things produce no electricity at night time. How does the energy that now powers my car originally come from the sun? And how does the energy powering my iPod come from the sun? How does the energy required to get this tennis ball over the net originally come from the sun. Yes! That was out! That was out! You cannot be serious! Well, it's easier to understand than you think. Take this tennis ball. The energy required to hit it over the net came from the muscles in my arm. The energy for the muscles in my arm came from the breakfast I ate this morning. In fact, a banana, like this one. In fact, hey, it's 9.30 by my clock, let's start. Good morning, my name is Rob Farmer, I'm the Energy MC. Take one average size apple, throw it one meter in the air. You throw it one meter in the air, requires energy to throw it against gravity and the amount of energy required is about one joule of energy. Do it twice, that's two joules. Do it a hundred times, it would be a hundred joules. And of course, do it a thousand times would be a what? Kilojoule. Really good talking to you all. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to receiving any messages and things by email. Keep in touch. Bye for now. It's a sunny day here in Mallorca, and this array of PV solar cells are converting sunlight into electricity. PV solar cells are made of layers of silicon, and when the energy from the sun hits the solar cells, it releases electrons which travel down the wires in the form of electricity. The energy from the solar cells is stored inside these batteries, which are quite similar to car batteries. Now remember, electrical appliances such as washing machines, televisions, fridges, require 240 volts 
AC. So the next stage in the process is to convert the 24 volts DC into 240 volts AC. And that is done using an inverter. With all the millions of stars and all the millions of galaxies out there, it doesn't seem unfeasible that there could be life on other planets if those other planets exist. We already know that there are large gas planets that go around other stars. But we don't actually know yet if there are tiny little planets like Earth going around other stars. So to try and find out what the human race has done is set off the Kepler project, which is putting a telescope up in space that's looking very closely at a patch of the universe where they think there might be small planets. If those planets do exist, then there's a good chance that somewhere out in the vastness of the universe that there will be life. The crude oil is superheated and turned into vapour, and the vapour travels into the fractionating column. Now the fractionating column is cooler at the top and hotter at the bottom, and the vapour travels up through the bubble caps, the lighter fractions rising to the top, and the heavier fractions sinking down to the bottom. Those lighter fractions can be drawn off and turned into gasolines, gases, kerosenes and diesels, whereas the heavier fractions are then drawn off for further processing. So Mark, what does an instrumentation apprentice do here at the refinery? OK, well as an apprentice I'm actually trained to become an instrumentation technician. Instrumentation is all about measuring process variables. So the, the actual processes here have to be monitored using bits of equipment and your role is to make sure that equipment's working properly? Yeah, exactly that. We carry out the maintenance on all the instrumentation equipment across the refinery. Now, I'm quite interested in two pieces of equipment here at the site. One's a platformer and the other one's called the ISOM. What does the platformer and the ISOM do? OK, well, once the fuels have come out of... And to take advantage of that wind power, modern wind turbines will have to be built across the country in windy locations. Here on Lloyd Moor in Yorkshire, 13 of these modern wind turbines have been built. And just look at the size of them. Wind turbines are low carbon and once installed, produce electricity as long as the wind blows. But therein lies the problem. When there's plenty of wind, like today, these things produce plenty of electricity. But on days when there's no wind, they produce no electricity at all. However, we, the consumers, want electricity 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks a year. The power station here at Rugeley in Staffordshire is rated at 1 gigawatt and uses coal to produce enough electricity for about one million people. That's enough electricity for a city the size of Birmingham. It's one of 95 large electricity generating plants in the UK that produce electricity at a rate of more than 100 megawatts. But before we take a closer look at the power station itself, some history of the science of electricity.